we are going to be taking a little bit of terpudocol and we're going to be converting it into terpudyl chloride. And then we're going to be doing a distillation in normal circumstances. For today, we're gonna to skip that distillation part just because the purification step takes a lot of time and you guys have already seen a distillation. So today we're gonna to start with a little bit of terpudyl alcohol. Terpudyl alcohol is particularly vulnerable to SN1 reactions because it is a tertiary alcohol and SN1 reactions favor secondary, but especially tertiary carbons for reactions. Now, why do they not favor quaternary carbons? Mostly because there's just nothing to react. Those carbon-carbon bonds are gonna to be too strong to break for an SN1 reaction most of the time. So I'm going to fill this up to seven milliliters, which is this mark right here. This stuff is a little noxious. You might want to work in the hood, but it's not too harmful. I'm going to just deposit all of this liquid into the separatory funnel. This is our first alcohol. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this chilled hydrochloric acid. I'm going to add 25 milliliters into this flask. That's quite a bit of hydrochloric acid. This is 12 molar, it's very concentrated, so you want to be really careful when doing this. As you can see, it's already starting to react. It would react even faster if it wasn't chilled, so you really want to make sure that you pay attention to any signs that it's going fast, you should slow down or stop. Like let's say it begins to sputter. But for now, it looks, looks fine. And this is already starting to react, you can tell, because as soon as it hit the liquid, release some vapor, probably a little bit of hydrochloric, or it could be water vapor from this reaction. So you want to be always releasing gas from your separatory funnel as you shake it. Because if you don't, it can build up pressure. And especially if you have a mixture like this in here, it can drip onto your hand and that is not something that you really want. You don't want 12 molar hydrochloric acid on your hand most of the time. I know that I don't. All right, well it's been 10 minutes and there's not a lot of activity. It's pretty quiet on the front here in this mixture. It seems to have formed a small layer, so I'm gonna give this another shake real quick just to make sure everything is fully reacted. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a little bit of water, cold water that I've been chilling for some time and I'm going to add 10 milliliters to this mixture for our first wash. So this would be called washing a mixture with 10 milliliters of cold water. So I'm going to place the stopper back in the top and mix this around as usual. Now you're mixing cold water, but with strong acid. So probably there's gonna be some kind of gas release. You can smell it a little bit, but it's very gentle in this case. And also the cold helps stifle the intensity of that reaction. So for now, we'll let these layers kind of separate. So, the interesting thing about halogenated solvents is sometimes they have a higher density than water. In this case, that is not gonna be a problem here. We actually know that a larger portion of this is going to be the water, and that's because the hydrochloric acid is going to have made up a larger portion of this, and, and there's only seven milliliters of the, uh, of the alkane or the uh, terpidyl alcohol that we placed in the beginning, and that's gonna represent this thin layer at the top here. All the rest of this is gonna to be together 
10 milliliters of water that we added, which are gonna be generally more dense anyways, right? Water usually has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter. The terpetal alcohol was a lot closer to 0 0.8 grams per milliliter, so definitely lighter. Now, what are we doing next? We are going to take this aqueous portion, I'm gonna lower this a little bit, and I'm going to put this stopper on the side so we don't build up pressure in here. And I'm going to deposit the aqueous layer into this flask. So once you know that you only have your organic portion left in the top, we're gonna to take the aqueous portion, knock it out of the way, and we're gonna go on to our next reaction, which in this case is gonna be some sodium bicarbonate. Five percent sodium bicarbonate, the five percent sodium bicarbonate solution is going to be a great way to neutralize this solution which could still have some residual strong acid in it. Um, and so I'm gonna actually measure out like this. So 10 milliliters. The main products of a reaction between sodium bicarbonate and acid, as you may have seen in your school days as a youth um, doing volcanoes, is going to be CO2 and water, right? Now we have two layers again, and the top layer, as before, is going to be our organic layer. So the bottom layer, we can get rid of, because it is of no use to us. All right. And the last portion is just gonna be a little bit more water. I'm gonna take another 10 milliliters. and pour it into our separatory funnel. You begin to see the layers separate. And once they've separated, you're ready to pour off the aqueous portion. This right here, is our product. And so distillation is a little bit time consuming. And when it comes to actually analyzing this product, there's actually a pretty easy way to do that without having to go through the whole distillation process, which is valuable and um, definitely something that's worth practicing, but not what we're going to do today. For now, we're just gonna take a little bit of this product, going to add a little bit of silver chloride to it in order to see whether or not it reacts, or sorry, silver nitrate, I apologize, to see whether it reacts to form silver chloride. Silver chloride is a very favorable, insoluble salt to be produced, and in the presence of silver nitrate, which is a soluble silver salt, if it finds chloride that's available, it will leave solution to form a whitish gray precipitate. It appears that we definitely formed some silver chloride, which means that we definitely have the product that we are interested in. Now, what is an interference here that could have happened? Maybe there was uh, hydrochloric acid left over. That's what distillation would probably help get rid of. Uh, maybe if we had dried this first with uh, calcium chloride, that could have uh, created some residual um, chloride lying around. But we could always do other uh, different kinds of tests to figure out what it is. Um, so, terpetal chloride will have a different 
melting point, a different boiling point, a variety of different properties that we could also determine its purity and or identity with. Well, awesome. So that's all we're gonna do today for the uh, experiment number seven for SN1 reactions. And enjoy the post lab.